Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster, and we are here to do part three of What If Asta Had Ultra Sans's Powers. Now, when we last left off, we just finished up with the black market portion of the show. And are now at the dungeon arc, where Yami informs Noel and Asta that they're going to a dungeon. Also telling them that it's right smack dab on the border of the Clover and Diamond Kingdom that have been feuding for years. Telling them that Asta, Noel, and Luck are all going. They don't really have much to complain about, considering it's a direct request from the Wizard King. Asta pulls out his map again and takes a look, asking where exactly it is. Once it's been pointed out, Asta grabs hold of Luck and Noel's shoulders and teleports them there immediately. Once they got there, they, Noel said, give us a, a warning next time, with Lux at, at saying, that was awesome. We got all the way up here in an instant. Asta just starts walking saying, of course we did. It's, it's a shortcut. Uh, Lux began asking them questions about it. He says that he's been getting better at it, familiarizing himself with the with the geography and everything of the Clover Kingdom, saying that he needs to know a beginning point where he is now to a destination point where he wants to go. If he doesn't have that, it either won't work or there'll be some issues. Luck kind of gets it, but isn't really listening while he says he wants that after the mission, he wants to fight Asta, which he declines. As they go into the dungeon like cannon, uh, Luck opens up the wall, showing off the dungeons in inside, and same as in cannon, he triggers some traps that Asta takes care of quickly. When he yells out for Luck to stop so he can see if there's anybody else here. Luck states, Well, unless your magic and your magic control and sensing are as good as mine, you probably aren't gonna find them. Asta just says, I don't need to sense their magic. The Luck looked interested in this and says, Oh really? Then how are you going to find them? You Asta replies with, you forget what my magic is, don't you? Even if this place is filled with enough magic to make it difficult to locate, locate individuals in it with, uh, with basic magic sense, it can't hide their souls from my soul magic. Lux is interested and says, go ahead. As Asta closed his eyes, the marks begin to form on his face. Which Noel asks, what exactly are those marks? Asta opens one of his eyes, stating, it's just something that happens, seeing a glowing yellow eye. Along with his soul revealed, right now. He states that there are that there's a number of unfamiliar souls already in the dungeon and that there seems to be one that's off uh, away from the group he pauses for a moment and says something's up with it though feels weird then he expands it a little bit further and says, oh, it looks like we aren't the only ones that were sent here to be dealt, to deal with the dungeon from the Clover Kingdom. Well, says, hang on, what are you talking about? Asta says, well, I feel 
a familiar soul that's that's coming our way and he's accompanied by two others if i know who he is and if i'm guessing the, the two with him are squad members at this point luck finally finds the the group of mages and asked Asta how many there were. When he answered him, he found, recognized it as the same group. I didn't know their exact number, so I'm just saying it that way. And blitzes off with Asta saying, hang on, where are you going? He sends until he feels that he's heading directly towards the group of unknown people sighing as he tells Mimosa I mean yeah sorry sorry about that a lot of characters trying to keep track of this but he tells Noel that he's going to take the lead and use his sword to tap on the ground to destroy any trap magic Noel's okay with this they go on as in canon with Asta destroying spells in front of them as they continued the walk until uh, Noel gets flustered again being left alone with Asta and walks ahead getting caught by trap magic though this time Asta uses his magic pis uh, magic six suitor pistol that he creates using the yellow magic from his soul and charges it up, firing a bullet that blows away the plant that grabbed Noel, grabbing her before she hit the ground. Which is when you know Klaus and Mimosa show up, saying, "Already having trouble, Asta." Asta says, <laughs> "So I see you're looking up. Oh, in one." Yeah, sorry. I see you're looking just fine. No, no marks, no nothing. You always were able to handle yourself. Which Klaus interrupt, asking why are the black bulls here? When he told them that the Wizard King sent them, they still had the same argument as in canon, and wondering why they that the black bulls would be so reckless as to send two newbies Asta stated that they didn't their senior went off to deal with a separate uh, to deal with a group of enemies that are in the dungeon Klaus said and how do you know that you know chimes in saying that he has soul magic even if this dungeon is making it harder to sense an individual's magic he can sense their souls itself despite the interfere the mana in this dungeon interfering with the mana sense klaus huffs a little bit saying is that so are there any others asta says yeah there is another but it's only one guy and he seems to be the in the dungeon at a lower level than us or the group that luck is going after when he heard hears that he said luck the cherry berserker of course then at before while they were getting ready to go Asta told them that they should watch out Klaus stood look back at him saying we don't need any warning from you you know knowing that what Asta can do asked what do you mean watch out Asta explained that this guy's soul uh, he starts to explain that a soul is like a reflection of a person and more exact their mind their state of mind in a lot of ways when it comes to the personality and all that and how they think but something's up with this guy it's like his mind 
his soul's vibrations are such that his like his consciousness mind emotions is almost as if they're distorted by something it kind of gets puts me off so you should prob so you should probably be careful you know thanks him with Klaus just scoffing at him as you know makes the wind arc and mimosa makes the geiger calendar hurrying up and going right over to where the dungeon vault is noel states hey can't you teleport us to the uh to the vault so we get there instantly asta stated no he can't he doesn't know the layout of this place and he can't use his soul magic to do to get it and he's not too keen on appearing up in front of a uh of unknown enemies who have a distorted soul uh, right when he said that he started sensing something weird when he closed his eyes and asked noel to hold on for a bit he focused and sensed Lux soul was giving off vibrations of distress. He he told Noel the that they're going to help Luck. He creates two gaster blasters and tells her to get on one of them. As he jumped onto one, Noel struggles, being a little afraid, hopping on as they fly away. Noel on the way she asks why don't you use these things more often also replies with hmm i just these things have a lot of power packed in them if i'm not careful they can do a lot a plenty of damage without me meaning to so they're not the my most favorite things to use in a fight it's kind of like a feeling it's hard to explain Though this feeling is remnants of sand still in him that are that are in him that don't really like the fight. Though Asta's hard headed and will fight if when needed and all that, as as well as ready for combat training. Though there are still the traces of the sands that doesn't particularly like the fight or use the gaster blasters to begin with inside of Asta, so he prefers not to use them unless he has to. As they're going there, they see Luck trapped into a sm in some kind of smoke uh, cross. Asta hurries up, teleporting right to Luck to cut him free with the anti-magic sword. The well, uh, jumps off of the skull when it gets close enough to the ground. The smoke mage takes a look and is doing his same old bit about being tired and old, saying that people, kids of such youth are so annoying to fight and stuff like that. Which is when he used his smoke magic to surround him, them, to hide and hide his presence. Luck was firing and all that, getting completely furious with Asta telling, giving him the same speech as in canon that they need to work together, and that he has people that he can rely on. And he mentions that it doesn't matter if you, if he's hiding his magic. Remember how I found him and his, how I located him and his friends before? Luck smirked for a little bit and told Noel to get his wand, her wand ready. She pulled it out asking why. He, with Luck saying, it seems like Asta is gonna drag, is gonna get us to that to this smoke bastard hiding. Asta holds out his hand open, saying, oh, I'm gonna do a lot more than that. Gripping 
uh, blue soul begins to light up in the smoke as Asta pulls his hand towards him forcefully, which results in the smoke maze being yanked clean out of his smoke that he was hiding in. When he tried to use a spell to attack, Asta quickly dispelled it and then teleported out of the way where Luck and the Well blasted him with magic at the same time. As he was going down, he tried to use a last ditch spell to attack them, but Asta hurried up and slammed him with the sword. Unfortunately for them, he was able to give off one last spell to get him and his men out of there using the smoke car. When Noel asked if they're going after him, Asta said, No, that we probably shouldn't. They still have another guy in the dungeon, and they're all pretty banged up from from even if that guy has some broken ribs and such his men are also uh, beat up pretty bad from luck so they're not much of a threat for us to worry about the one we have to worry about I'm guessing is the guy that went that splintered off from their group to go to the vault by himself I doubt anybody who isn't confident in their abilities would do that which means this guy has to be strong once he said that, he went to search to see where that guy was. When he felt that you know, Klaus and Mimosa's souls were given off vibrations of distress, and the soul that gave him a weird vibe was giving off hostile vibe, was giving off a feeling of hostility. He says, we have to go now. The others are in trouble. He grabs onto Noel and Luck, teleporting them right there. He hurries up, and when he sees that Marge is about to do a finishing blow on Yuno, using his jetpack uh, jaws on his back to fly directly at the sword, slicing it in half with the Demon Slayer sword. Asta and you know still have their argument about who say that uh, Asta saved you know with Mo with Noel making a barrier around Mimosa while she's being healed saying I thought you can teleport us through the dungeon Asta says I can do it because I didn't know the layout of this place but since I sensed where all every where you know uh, Klaus and Mimosa's souls were, I as well as this guy, I had a general location to work with. That's why I'm I was able to get us here so without trouble. He huffed a little bit and sighed, just letting it go with Marge doing the same speech as saying he's going to crush them. Asa smirks, saying, is that right? He hurries up and blitzes towards Marge, striking with the sword, but turning out to be a clone. Which Marge tries to attack him, but was out of luck because Asta teleported behind him to punch with his gauntlet. Blocking with his arms, Marge was blown back a bit. Though, he, before he had a time to take a breath from the powerful hit, the karma effect of the gauntlets activated, causing uh, the similar force to occur on the same spot five more times, which shattered the armor on Mars's uh, covering Mars's arm. He used his mineral magic to repair it as Asta was charging again. Mars used his mineral magic to make more clones and attack all of them while using it to try to keep his distance from Asta. 
Asta used his jetpack to fly around and stay away from Mars's mineral magic while slicing any that come near to come close and repelling ones that go at him. He, until he finally sees to where he sees a good opening and quickly uses his jetpack, jaw, gaster jetpack to blast right to Mars, slamming him with the sword at a speed to where Mars couldn't react properly, throwing him into the water. Luck was dealing with the, Luck and the others were dealing with the mineral clones until Mars showed up in a giant mineral golem. When he attacked and Asta sliced it in half, the crystals were beginning to form to attempt to blast, to crush him. It was, they, you know, yelled out for Asta, but was met with, you should really relax, you know, I'm not defenseless enough to be tricked like that. When the, taking a closer look, bones, bones emerged from the ground that were on both sides of Asta that prevented the cr mineral magic from crushing him. He says, so it looks like you are strong enough to take it. Sorry this hurts, but I need you to, I need you to go to sleep for now. He creates a gaster blaster and blasts his Mars in the mineral golem armor, sending him flying. Once that happens, he uses a second uh, gaster blaster to use its jaws to grab Mars, as well as its his grimoire, bringing them toward him, which Klaus still restrains from using his magic. He asks, what kind of magic do you even use? It does all kinds of things that I don't even get. Asta just says, I use soul magic, and that comes with a lot of different properties. Those bones and skulls, as well as these gauntlets and another weapon. Plus, I got this sword that nullifies that the destroys magic. Klaus says, destroys? <laughs> As he scoffs off, thinking, a commoner shouldn't have this kind of power. Once they get to the door, Lux asks Asta to open it with his sword, with Klaus saying, a commoner couldn't open this, but instantly proving them wrong. Once they're in, they start exploring, checking out all of the treasure. Then Asta felt something coming from his grimoire. When he grabbed it and used his power, the black soul came up. He said, what exactly are you reacting to? Whatever you are and whoever you are in there, I can't talk to you, but, but whatever you want, you better say. As a small dark strand began to float and ascend from the black heart that was hovering lightly above the, grip, the face of his grimoire, Asta followed it, saying, All right, follow the leader, I guess, until it gets to a circle mark on the wall. He forms a gauntlet and breaks through with Klaus saying, What are you doing? Asta walks in and sees a second anti-magic sword, stating, Is that what you wanted, huh? All right. He grabs hold and walks out, with Klaus saying, What is it? He just holds up a second anti-magic sword. While they're distracted, the well ends up being attacked, as well as Klaus, Luck, and Yuno know, being stuck in crystal. And Mars even more furious. He looks at Asta and then sees Mimosa healing Noel, saying, with Mars saying, 
if you're going to be moving around that much while we fight, I guess I have to give you a reason to stay put. Making blades, aiming at Noel and Mimosa, Asta quickly gets in between them with the with his two anti-magic stars and starts hacking and slashing, getting them away from him. When it began to overwhelm him, he says, all right, fine then, and uses his new magic that makes the the hand the hand part of the gauntlets that have a similar uh, look to his gauntlets, but work like Gaster's ability to make uh, bone hands that he can control. He uses it to smash the spinning mineral daggers that he can't hit with his swords, thinking, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is insane. I can't move and I can't attack like this. Damn it. Damn it, if this keeps up, there's no telling what might happen. They could die and he could end up going after the others with this kind of attack. And I can't save them all. Damn it. For a moment, he felt something. He felt a, he, and he heard a voice saying, calm down, you need to focus. It's always, every time you get stressed, you always worry about the lives of those around you and whether or not you can save them. That's good. You have a fine heart and this caring nature for those you care about. Well, I suppose you get that from Sans. He was also very protective of the ones he cared for. But remember, you are not just filled with justice, but you are filled with bravery. So stand tall. Once that happens, Asta immediately begins to glow bright with yellow and orange light engulfing his entire body. Marge stops his attack, shocked by this. With orange and yellow lightning and co completely covering all of his body and his weapons, Noel says that he can do it. Along with blue light coming from the Demon Dweller sword, he slashes at Mars who what who was able to protect himself since he wasn't attacking at this time enough to keep himself from getting an incredibly damaging hit from that blast but not able to keep it from extinguishing his phoenix his healing phoenix rope also then blitzed right towards mars and using his one his left hand and four of the gauntlets that are made to float around he slams punching mars breaking the mineral golem hitting mars again using the karma effect causing a total of uh if i my math correct 30 hits bam 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 one after the other with the karma effects hitting Mars, knocking him out. Then Asta depowered, exhausted, saying, I didn't know I could do that. Ay, jeez. He begins to stand up, though, steadily, and uses his magic to grab hold the levitate uh, Mars along with his grimoire. Though, when that happened, he saw, he, with the little consciousness he had left, he saw that Asta was exhausted and tried a last-ditch effort attack. Before anybody was able to do anything, you know, things still happens as in canon where his new fairy uh, friend, uh, the Wind Spirit, breaks it, knocking, per, knock, Mars out one la nice and good 
with the dungeon beginning to collapse. As they said that they need to get out of there, Yuno used his magic to toss Mars over to where he sensed the other Diamond Kingdom mages gathering up some treasure. He told them to, to get close to him and grab on. Klaus said, what? Why? You know, yelled, just do it. As they all grabbed on to him, he hurried up and used his shortcuts to get him to the surface. The smoke mage and the others from the Diamond Kingdom were able to get out of there with uh, a good amount of treasure and we were in with Mars. Mars wakes up with a clearer sense of mind. When Asta went to sense what happened to the Diamond Mages, he could tell that they were on their way back home, but he could also tell that the cloudiness and the distortion in Mars's soul was, cl was cleared up. He's smart, thinking, huh, guess he just needed to get his screws knocked back in, huh? Luck asked, what are you talking about? Nothing. With Klaus hugging Yuno and Asta accepting them, even though that they're commoners and such, like in canon. After that, they gave the report to Yami, and time went on a bit, where we get to the part where they're called to the capital to give their reports. Asta and Noel, with Charmy unknowingly tagging along in secret, get there and meet up with you know Klaus and Mimosa, who is flustered at uh, at seeing Asta. On their way there, they start to talk until they're met by the Wizard King. Once they start their meeting, Yuno sews his new spell and Asta sews his new sword. And with how with uh at this moment we have uh, Julius asking about the form he heard Asta take in the dungeon. Asta replied with I'm not really sure what it was. I, it just kind of happened in the moment. Not sure if I could do it on uh, on command right now, though. Though it was pretty powerful. I just got a little exhausted because it was the first time I ever did that. So my body hasn't adjusted. Julius understood and said, of course. They ask their same question about what it takes to be a about to be the wizard king, and he still gives the same answer that they need to get results. And they were invited to the distinguished ceremony, where afterwards they began to eat. They began to hear their how the way that they talked about Asta and you know and such. Asta didn't really care. They could say whatever he, they want. He didn't really care about what they say. From the, from the sense and the vibrate and the vibe he got from the from their souls and such, he can tell that a lot of them are pretty crap people, and just ignores them. But. Once Solid began to walk over with some hostile intent toward Noel, he decided to use his magic a little discreetly, using his telekinesis to cause Solid to trip and fall in a way that made his water spill on him. Being frustrated, he just started yelling, saying that Noel and those commoners don't belong here. Noelle was getting uh, tense, but Asta placed his hand on her shoulder saying, Calm down. It's fine. You endured worse than, than what that guy, I'm sure you're, you're strong enough to endure more than what this guy can diss out. Don't 
let his word push you that way and begin which begin a bit of a conflict where he stated that he's going to be the wizard king no matter what they think upon the sand mage using his magic to encase Asta Asta then uh, shows up behind the mage tripping him and then punching him in the face though he didn't use his gauntlet because he figured that it'd be a bit too much to have the karma effect on him he teleported back to his original spot on the ground where Solid and his sister began to attack Asta, both being destroyed by his swords. The Iron Golem, I mean the Sand Golem, emerged right behind Asta, which he just quickly sliced it in half this time with his uh, ability to sense the hostilities of, of everyone's souls. When, Stating that you know I can tell when you're gonna pull something can't tell how how or where but I can tell when you're gonna pull something from your from sensing your hostility so it's pretty useless solid is frustrated and shoots a holy magic bullet which Asta reflects back being frustrated at being made to go on his knee by a commoner Nozel steps in, wishing to teach Asta a lesson for starting an uproar, when Fergolion steps in to stop him. And Leopold still says that Asta's interesting and that he claims him as his rival, but Asta doesn't really care. Which is when the attack happened. Once they use their the, the stone mage makes a replica of the city to get a sense of what's going on but saying that with him saying that there's multiple enemies throughout the entire king the capital Asta senses them and remarks that it doesn't seem like any of the it doesn't seem like uh, it seems like very little of the people invading or the or actual are actually alive they look at him saying what do you mean you forget my what my magic is already soul magic they're probably using something they're probably manipulating something like puppets to use as foot soldiers for this attack there's actually very little of them of the actual enemy who is controlling their pawns that are actually in the capital They look at him and are just going to have to trust them on this, but Asta's already poofed away with him saying, with them saying, where did he go? Asta, uh, you know, stated he probably went off to where he felt someone's soul giving off the most aggression thinking that's probably the guy who's attacking them. Asta is yelling and hacking and slashing all of the zombies saying, of course corpses. Figures why they don't have a soul in them. As the others split up, same as in canon, with like Oleon, Noel, and Leopold going to the larger group with no with the radies about to harm the little girl like in canon Asta steps in punching him in the gut right when he's about to touch her using his gauntlet to give the karma effect when that happens he puts his hand on the little girl's head telling her that it's going to be okay teleporting her into a safer place in the in the capital where she should be fine close to the royal castle telling the guards to watch this kid as he teleports back 
he says, really, you're the one controlling all of these corpses? Radies gets up saying, ugh, that hurt. He sends his zombies out to attack him, but Asta quickly takes care of them. Saying, really? These things are just so weak. They're not much of a challenge for someone who can destroy the magic you're using to fuel them. Brady gets frustrated and says, Is that so? Then fine, take this. He summons Jimmy to use his curse magic, which is about when Noel and Leopold show up, which he uses the which Brady uses the mud wraith to attack them. Their fight still goes the same, but Asta teleports behind Jimmy and stabs him right from behind. Radies hurries up and calls for Alfred that's shooting lightning. Asta moves around, avoiding it, using teleport if he has to, saying this one's a little bit more challenging, but not that much, as he create uh, bones with sharpened ends to stab all throughout Alfred, including the head, then using multiple bones around him to sever his head. Radies begins to get pissed with the uh, similar golem, the similar wraith, with the mud magic destroyed now, he summons up his final uh, wraith that he summoned with the barrier magic. Also is able to defend himself, though he uses a bone, he hurries up and uses a wall of bones to protect himself. Only landing them down when he has a gaster blaster ready and properly aimed. He fires, he teleports, with it right behind them in, at an angle where he blasts it with the blast going upwards to, so he wouldn't destroy the city while also making sure Radies wasn't in the line of fire since the further away the blast goes the wider it gets with the zombie with the defense raid taken care of and Rady freaking out the Goleon stated well done, young man, and uses his flame magic to capture him. You did quite well. Asa says, it's nothing. And he also commends him, saying that it's, it's quite unique for you, to te- for you to be able to tell that, it, that this force attacking us didn't, weren't actually alive. Though it made it easier to deal with them not being alive since we didn't have have to capture them. Since uh, if you're wondering, yeah, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Can't get information out of a corpse about uh, organizations and stuff, but whatever. Radies begins to freak out as they examine his book and the other magic knights deal with the uh, other raves with the nobles and Solid being annoyed that Asta was right about the forces not being actually alive. While also being curious about where the people that are attacking them that aren't just puppets are hiding. Which is when it begins. Where the spatial mage forms a uh, a portal to teleport Flagolion. Asa tries to react, but fails before he disappears. Noel asks, didn't you sense any hostility? No, no, that wasn't an attack. It was just something to move him from one location to another, so there wasn't any hostile intent. He's annoyed by this and senses. The other magic knights are gone. Sensing you know is still here, sighs in relief. Though he then senses something coming from underneath the pile of corpses. He blitz right towards them and slashes, blowing them away. 
and noticing that it was the spatial mage that sent away the Golion and the other magic knights. So getting surrounded by more of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, they Noel hurry they end up trying to defend themselves. Asta does what he can and uses his uh, six shooter to fire the ha and have the bullet explode before hitting their target to blow them back. With uh, Leopold asking, why are you making them as those attacks explode before they get to him? Asta said, I'm trying to disorient them and knock them out before they uh, so we can capture them. Though this continues until Legolion falls down from from a portal, missing an arm. Noel hurries up, pressing, putting pressure on the wound, with Leopold freaking out, frozen. Noel hurries up and creates a barrier, but the sea dragon's lair, but it was being absorbed by one of the mages' uh, magic. The root magic. Asta just stood there, getting angry more and more. As the grimoire begins to sow its black soul, Asta's marks began to sew up, though in this time, instead of showing glowing a glowing yellow and a glowing orange eye, it was completely pitch black, and the marks began to be Come bigger and extend more like cracks across his face on the sides of his face and even beginning to encompass his arms yelling you you did this you'll pay he summons two gaster blasters that are now completely black and are and charge up fire and killing two of the mages. Sally uses her gel magic to try to attack him, but using one of the gaster blasters already summoned, turning it and destroying her sticky salamander instantly. They could feel the eye of the midnight sun along with Noel and Leopold could feel the absolute rage, the hatred emanating from Asta at this time Asta was in some kind of realm a dark space wondering where he was but at the moment all he heard was but we can finally talk he asked who are you until he felt it huh so you're the soul inside my grimoire where am I and what's going on he states that his body is going on a rampage, tearing apart the people that harmed that Legolion fella. Also stating that they'll be dealt with soon. Asta yelled at him saying, No! No, we can't kill them. We have to capture them. The, with the voice saying, Is that so? Why? They harmed someone that you held respect for. Someone who, despite what the common nature of someone of his social standing would act like, what showed such kindness, and you would show mercy to the people who took his arm and is now the cause of him being under the threat of dying? Asta said, enough. Just stop this. I'm taking control back. He remarks saying, oh, I'm not the one to control. Asta said, what do you mean? It's your hatred and your anger towards them for what they did. My soul is, your, this magic of souls is unique. It's actually taking my hatred and using it as fuel for your power. It's engulfing you and you're losing yourself in it. No, 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 no. And, but then he suddenly heard another voice saying, You should really calm down, kid. And you, I get you hate. I get, I know you hate a lot of people. And I took a look into your memories since 
you so close, but seriously, your grudge against the ones that against your own kind aren't his issues, though they though they might still be a problem for him, considering he's stuck with you. Asta looks back and sees Sans, though he looks different. He's in he's wearing a blue jacket and his marks are gone. He says, Sans? Hey kid. Calm down, alright? I know it hurts when someone you respect and someone you care for gets hurt. But you can't let that anger control you. But I also know that sometimes you just have to do what must be done, even if you don't like it. But if you choose not to harm them, then don't. Another person appeared. This time, it was a more clearer version of the orange soul. It was a kid who wore a headband and gloves. He told him, yeah, trust me, it doesn't feel good to be forced in a fight, but sometimes you have to. But whether you harm them or not is still your choice. This hatred this guy has is amp it's amping you up and making you go on a rampage. But it's your body. It's your soul. So, grit. So, stand up and take control. Also, smirk, standing up, saying thanks. Hope to see you guys again. Uh, Sand remarks, eh, you don't have to. I, ever since, ever since we merged with you, I've had plenty of time to take naps. Asta just laughing, but Sand saying, oh, did I say something that was humorous? And the bravery show slaps his face saying, oh my god, please come again soon. I can't be dealing with his puns all the time. Asta uh, just kind of chuckles saying, fine. He takes a deep breath and focuses, revealing his soul that was being wrapped, slightly wrapped around by some of the darkness from the dark soul. Though he still doesn't know much about what going on with it but he figures that whatever caused him to have so much hatred someone must have wronged him the, in the worst possible way to make them hate someone to be a soul of hatred like this he takes the soul of hatred in front of him and and uses his power to try to surround it to encase it to keep the power from leaking out eventually making a cell that glows red i mean that glowing uh, orange and yellow around it to act like a protective barrier saying i don't need your power right now maybe once i can kind of understand it a bit better and control it maybe but not now the voice from the dark soul just sighed saying fine but you will need my power you're already using the swords, and at the moment, that's good enough. He asks, Asta asks what his name is, but he scoffs at him, saying, It doesn't matter what my name is, but you must call me something. Just call me D. Asta says, Fine. At back in the real world, Asta is going, while this was going on, Asta was smacking around the eye of the midnight sun, and they were retreated when the uh, Clover Kingdom mages were came. When Sally went to attack Asta to try to capture him is when Asta finally snapped out of it. Seeing that Sludge was about to grab hold of him, he hurried up and teleported away, breathing heavily from what just happened. They got, they were able to get away, but Asta was exhausted and wasn't in the mood to not magically exhausted but physically having that power of the soul of hatred coursing through me really does hurt he stands up with Noel asking what happened and 
Mimosa, while Mimosa begins to heal for Goleon. Asta explains to the people that saw that the that his grimoire has a soul and that it's a bit potent. His anger and hate for what they did to Vagolion triggered its power to seep into him, and it went ran on a rampage. When he asked what is it, when he asked what should they do now, is when the Wizard King showed up with a captured member of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. Stating that unfortunately other members were able to get away from their leader's assistance And Leopold still comes out marking his forehead with that giving doing that pledge again and Once that's all taken care of Asta meets up with Charmy asking why is she here and how does he get here showing him her Magic little trick As for Yunos and it goes the same as in canon with all that and Charmy states and I found my prince Asta just decides to just leave it alone and Tells them that they're going home And that he's just done with today for now they hurry up and teleport back and uh, after the Julius gives his little speech and go straight to bed with Yami asking what's up with him Noel states that a lot happened and with her explaining what's going what happened to, with them over there Yami isn't that bothered by it though he's annoyed that so and also a little curious about who could have done that to Flagolion saying that he isn't a pushover, so it's hard to believe that someone just did that to him without having some serious magical power. So this is where we'll be ending it off for right now. And uh, thank you for the likes, the subscriptions, and all that. Please continue to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to watch more parts of the what ifs. Also, please remember to comment down below and hope you enjoy. Also, check out the community tab for new parts of what ifs. As for uh, scheduling purposes, once I get the beginning parts of the what ifs that I have out there so far, uh, that I'm going to be having out there that I have the thumbnails for right now, uh, I will then put on my community tab the method of the scheduling of the what ifs. That's for why I'm doing so many what ifs and all that. Uh, that's for me to know and to enjoy. Because it's somewhat of a stress relief in a way. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and all that. Hope you enjoyed and see you later.